This week's hardware news recap focuses on Intel updates to the Xeon processor line, the AMD Boltzmann Initiative, Leon Lee's PC-010 case, which we saw at Computex, but is now finally shipping. And we've got a couple of information updates on the Boltzmann Initiative and Zen CPUs. But before that, this content is brought to you by AMD's RX 470 video card, which we have found to be the best price to performance in the sub $200 class. You can find a link below to a couple of RX 470 options. So other than news in the scientific community of the smallest unit of time ever measured, the Zepto second, this week also had some interesting tidbits of information out of the supercomputing conference. So that was in full swing this week, SC16 it is called, and Intel announced its Two, it announced two things. So Intel announced a $250 million investment in self-driving cars, which is of course a big deal. And they also announced in the enthusiast world and, and the production world an update to the Xeon platform. So the Xeon E52699A CPU is the new CPU that was announced at SC16. That is a refresh and we'll focus on the CPU for now. The Xeon E52699A is a Broadwell E update primarily amounting to a clock rate increase of 200 megahertz in both base and boost. The rest of the CPU remains largely the same other than price. It's now $4,900 or 4938 if you're gonna nitpick. And that's an increase of $823 over the previous Xeon equivalent at 4115. Intel says this change increases Linpack performance by 4.8%, which would appeal to HPC users, at least those at the front edge of HPC. And Intel also ran, interestingly, a technology demonstration of its Skylake E series for the first time, which should be available in the summer of next year. Skylake E will support AVX 512 instructions. We don't really have any hard numbers yet. It's too early for benchmarks, but keep an eye out for it in 2017, probably in mid-year, as that's generally when the E series platforms launch. On the less concrete side of news, we have some rumors out of the AMD Zen various rumor mills, and this time it's chip hell. So with AMD Zen, the rumors going around recently are that the branding initiative for the new CPUs will feature a similar stack up to what Intel uses. That would be a 3, 5, and 7 nomenclature for the numerical, su the numerical suffix. And that would, if, if it's real, there's no, again, hard evidence to this, but if that's real, I suppose the good news would be that in having a more unified uh, stack of branding between Intel and AMD, hopefully users who are less experienced in the products that they're buying will more easily be able to compare uh, one product to the next between vendors when it's otherwise normally pretty hard since the architectures are not linearly comparable. We've also seen Summit Ridge processors rumored at a price of around $300. That's not concrete or confirmed by anyone official. So obviously the best thing to do is probably wait until around CES, which is normally when AMD tends to announce things like this. We'll see if that happens. CES, January every year, first or second week. This time it is the first week of January, we'll be there. But the rumor is about $300 to the higher end Zen chips. That would be your eight core, 16 thread devices. We'll see how that holds. Uh, what is confirmed, though, is an update to AMD's Boltzmann Initiative, which we recently spoke with Raja Kadori about, the RTG chief architect, in our GPU Open interview. And with the supercomputing conference mostly behind us, we know that AMD has released version 1.3 of Rockham, or the Radeon Open Platform. And as we discussed with Kadori, AMD's Boltzmann Initiative seeks to convert code for other platforms, like CUDA code, into something that can run on AMD Radeon devices. This will help AMD fight for market share in HPC and workstation environments where CUDA presently holds a pretty significant foothold in the user base. And HIP, or HIP, is now entering version 1.0 used at SC16 to translate the CUDA accelerated cafe deep network with 99.6% of its code base successfully converted by complete automation. So that's something we did speak with Kadori about. You can check our interviews with him on the channel. There are two, and the one about GPU Open would be the one you'd want to see for information on this. Moving on to simpler topics, though. Leon Lee's PC-010, or 010 case, is a case that we saw at Computex. It is a compartmentalized case, and there was sort of a half prototype then. It was pretty much confirmed to hit market. We just didn't know when. And now it's been announced, and it's shipping as an available product. Other than its compartmentalization, the case has its tempered glass exterior side windows, and it's also using Leon Lee's typical dedication to higher quality materials, like its obsession with aluminum. So it's aluminum and glass. Those are expensive components. 
The PC-010 supports 240mm radiators, 120mm and 80mm fans. A bit small and loud, but there you have it. And it allows for reservoir fitment with removable mounting plates. The enclosure is now available for $250 at Newegg, so it's a hefty price tag, but one which makes sense for something that is, again, all aluminum and glass. So it might be a bit expensive for a case, but Leon Lee, kind of like Inwin, does do a bit more leaning towards art than function in some ways. And this is a mix of both of those, tempered glass, aluminum, very expensive components. So there you have it, $250 case. Now, as for other news, thermals and cooling, we've seen the new Thermalrite CPU cooler. So this is a small form factor cooler targeted for the tighter cases, the boxes like you might have a uh, sort of Lenovo style, DVR style case. That's what this is more targeted at. It's uh, medium height, it's an AXP 100H muscle is the name of the cooler. And that is a top down axial fan cooler, which measures at 100 millimeters for the fan. And then RPM according to Thermalrite is 900 to 2500. So uh, some of the low range there would offer a bit more silence, but we haven't tested it yet. So I don't have numbers on how good it is. The elevated heat sink, it's got kind of that design that swoops up is equipped with six six millimeter copper heat pipes. They are all nickel plated as is the cold plate and the entire base plate of the unit. And those transfer obviously your heat to the aluminum fins as normally, after which point the air pushes down and dissipates the heat, pretty standard stuff. So that supports a maximum load of 200 watts and it is the AXP 100H muscle, which should be available at some point in the semi immediate future. So that's it for this week. As always, Patreon link in the post roll video to help us out directly. Links in the description below for more information. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.